So now, uh, the only thing I'll have to do with the new chassis is to, it's not really on the chassis, it's on the chis system. If there's some air inside, mm, this is almost good, but nevertheless, well, while we are doing all this cleaning and stuff, we should push the air also out of the cis. So, so we make make everything one hundred percent done so how you do that is you pull up the outside tank so the ink under pressure goes to the cartridge and pushes the air out so when it reaches almost at the top you just put down the outside tank, clean that up a bit a little bit more maybe to push out the bubbles so I'm there we got to the to the ink maybe clean that up a bit so it doesn't rubberized doesn't get rubberized a bit more like this so now there you have it there's almost no air in the cartridge and that's the best situation you can make it's gonna last longer and also the head and the filter inside the cartridge would be useful for a longer period of time if there's some ink over there also scrape that off bubbles again this cartridge is fairly fairly good so but still there is some air inside also so we'll push that out bubbles 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 and still bubbles and now I think that the ink has reached the top clean that up a bit there so that one is filled also let's check the other two this one is pretty good from what I can see yeah bit of, bit of bubbles but not too much there's mostly ink inside all right so that one is pretty good and the last one and there's some ink ink on the sides let me just try to scrape that off a bit yeah we got most of it out because if that falls in the cartridge you might clog the filter inside so you won't be able to get as much ink inside as you need or the head needs bubbly but also I think that the ink has reached the top let me just check that once more
yeah I think we're good over there and you put everything back inside put this back inside and these are the cartridges for white so maybe you have to release a bit of just lift that up there but as you saw already the white channel is pretty much clogged so we won't be having much of use out of these two but the printer is mostly it's not even used for printing dark shirts so these channels don't matter what matters is these two uh, CMYK channels and those are pretty much okay 100% and now we've done everything we had to do with this chassis there's one more thing we could do which we didn't do before and that's twist twist this metal part sticking inside the standing on the way for the flat table to move so what you have to do is just take some small hammer and twist that inside let me just find one for the moment so we got that one inside and there's not really much space to move the hammer around there so now nothing's in the way and the next thing we have to do only thing basically left uh, we will change this this carrier is I don't know it's sawed off but we will change we will have to change that too because we uh, have to put the pipes on there and as you can see these pipes are pretty much twisted a few times be sure to to straighten that up as much as you can because if the pipe is twisted it might be stocking somewhere around inside the printer so that's uh, that's what we, we we will deal with that later but now we can go ahead and put the chassis inside so we got that inside and also we have to place the tis in the on its position in the box so i'm gonna need the help of my colleague with that so we will catch you a bit later until we connect everything and put the tis back in the place uh, we've put everything back together on this dtg and we've uh, tried some test prints but we've noticed that uh, there's some funky moving in this uh, table moving uh, front and back sometimes the table won't be uh, going back at all when we press the uh, return button or reload how some some may call it reload and when the table is uh, moving in printing so that means uh, slowly uh, moving slowly forward uh, that is almost good but not not perfectly there are some skipping of the impulses because you know all of this DTG DTGs are using the uh, step motor so that means that one impulse on the input on the motor means uh, one 
uh, one move, one step of the table to the front or to the back. So we've noticed that there's uh, some uh, skipping of the impulses when the uh, when the uh, the encoder. This is the round encoder on the printer when it's moving fast. Uh, then it's either uh, not moving the table at all or it's skipping impulses or it's moving should be moving fast it's moving very slow so oh, uh, first we thought uh, there there might be some problems with this cable zone and this table uh, cables tend to wear down and break and something like that so we did test anything everything else except uh, this sensor and uh, and this encoder but uh, if you look if you look it closely so there are some uh, markings at the edge of the encoder this encoder is kind of kind of grayish gray gray circle around it so uh, this is not uh, exactly the state of the encoder it should be uh, looking like and it's not even uh, dirty so these encoders are uh, it's common to clean them with alcohol they get dirty uh, uh, dusty or uh, mist of the uh, ink tends to stick to the encoder so you have to clean that up but this is not really uh, uh, dirty it's uh, kind of uh, worn so it's 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 like the plastic is scratched from the rear side which could be possible because actually it has some movement uh, front to the back it's not very 100% uh, stiff position uh, so and this is a encoder from one other printer and as you can see this circle is much shinier and we could say even more transparent than this one so probably that's the cause of why the table is skipping uh, or the motor of the table is skipping the impulses because and it's mostly when it turns faster it's because uh, the sensor of the encoder cannot read the impulses either in time or cannot read at all so uh, we've tested uh, all other things and they seem to be fine so now the only thing left to do is to change this encoder also and see if we're gonna get some clear prints and usual working or moving of the table so how do we do that this this uh, encoder new one is on the on the long shaft over here so we're gonna have to cut that off and we're gonna have to re uh, remove some of these uh, rings and uh, springs and we'll check what's what will be going on uh, when we replace that one and we got this uh, new uh, round encoder uh, mounted on the chassis so now uh, you can see that this is much much more cleaner and much more uh, different than the one we've dismantled so here you can see I don't know if you can see the difference over here and 
there's one thing that is uh, obvious this is uh, this uh, encoder has been placed more to the inside so you can see this metal part of the shaft is sticking more over here than over here this is actually how it should be mounted but maybe when the during time when the printer is printing and so on maybe this uh, encoder moved a bit to the inside so what happened here is that uh, the encoder was too close to the other sprockets and other shafts and metal parts so it got it got wasted from this inside and this is actually not something we can clean it's like uh, scratched transparent plastic and when it's scratched it's no longer transparent and that's what caused problems of uh, table moving so we got that replaced with the new one and also just to be sure just in case we will be replacing this uh, sensor also because when the encoder was moving around it probably uh, did scratch on the inside of the sensor the sensor might be functional still but just in case uh, we want to replace the complete set just to be sure that everything will work in due time and not only for a short period of time so this is an easy uh, easy replacement goes like this has to be put onto the encoder and uh, let me just check it from the inside all right so you can hear a click and we have one screw to place on all right and actually this encoder is placed better inside the fork of the sensor it's not touching anything else and this was touching a lot so it's uh, pretty much a miracle that it's lasted so long as it, it did but to prevent that from happening we now uh, replace the whole set this is the new belt also the belt would probably be uh, good with the old one but just to be sure we will replace that one as well we got the belt on it's holding a bit more stronger than the old one so probably the belt did get stretched a bit let's see how it fits inside the sensor it fits perfectly it's touching nothing and that's how it should be and one more thing we have to add is this uh, cable let me just check how it is turned it's turned like this plugged in and should be going for this improvised holder and it goes through here because we don't want it to touch anything else there's a lot of sprockets there so this is how it's done properly and now we're gonna be placing the chassis back inside the printer and see if everything's gonna do some test prints and see if everything's gonna work fine it should be working fine now and so we finally finally got this sucker up and running and after uh, a long time a lot of time spent a lot of testing and all other stuff we finally got it up and running again and now everything 
is working as it should be 100 percent this is cmyk test all the colors are here and the table is now moving properly uh, 100 percent as it should be it's not skipping any any kind of uh, impulses and to check that one more time we will now since uh, this print is at, at the end we will now see if the table is gonna be ejected after the end of the print with no problems because uh, when it was skipping impulses the table will, would only start to move a bit then stand and the printer would go in error so now let's see if the error is gonna happen when the print ends if everything checks out okay then we got that uh, printer 100 percent done so if the green light stabilizes when the head returns back everything's okay all right so now everything is 100 percent done and that's all for this printer